Hello students, uh, good morning. So in a today's session, we will be talking about one particular topic from first year, that is the photosynthesis in higher plants. As you are aware that this topic comes under the heading plant physiology. Okay. So in fact, already this uh, topic has been started in a respective classes, in a each classes. So today we will discuss the continuation part of this uh, photosynthesis in higher plant. See, in this uh, topic of photosynthesis in a higher plant, today we will be discussing about one concept called as the early experiment. Okay, so this uh, early experiment uh, is the today's uh, concept. We know that uh, there are various uh, scientists who conducted uh, different kinds of experiments in the field of photosynthesis. For our syllabus, they have given the scientists like Joseph Priestley uh, and uh, the John Hingenas, T.W. Engelmann, and even they have given uh, the contribution of uh, Julius von Sack, and also they have given the one of the milestone experiment uh, conducted by one scientist called as Cornelius von Ney. So we will be discussing in today's session the contribution of all these scientists. Let us start the discussion with the first scientist that is Joseph Priestley. So this is Joseph Priestley, who is a British scientist. He conducted the experiment on the photosynthesis mechanism very earliest possible years. So his lifespan was 1733 to 1804. And this fellow conducted experiment in the year of 1770. And uh, his experiment is uh, popularly called as Bell Jar Experiment. Bell Jar Experiment. Okay. So in the year of 1770, Joseph Priestley conducted experiment and popularly it is known as Bell Jar experiment. And what is the outcome of his experiment? What, what we come to know from his experiment? It is that he conducted a C series of experiments. Right. So he conducted a series of experiments and he revealed what he revealed. He revealed role of air air in a growth of green plants so his experiment revealed that what is the role air is going to play in the growth of a green plant at the same time, we have to remember he is the same person who discovered oxygen, right? So oxygen was discovered in the year of 1774 by this scientist Joseph Priestley, but a name was given by another scientist called as Levoisier. Name was given by Levoisier, but actually oxygen was discovered by Joseph Priestley. You can expect this for our competitive level of examination, like who discovered oxygen, right? Now, what is the reason behind calling his experiment as a bell jar experiment? What is the reason? Because he used an apparatus, glass apparatus, which is a having a shape of a bell jar, right? Let us see that uh, diagram or the detailed image of experiment. So here it is the image of experiment conducted by Joseph Priestley. 
And the reason why it is called as a bell jar, if you look at this shape of the glassware, it is having the shape of jar, bell jar. That is why it is called as a bell jar experiment conducted by Joseph Priestley. Now, first, at the beginning of, you know, he has conducted an experiment in a series, not in a single step. He conducted an experiment in a series of events. In the first step, what he did, first he took the bell jar. Under that bell jar, he kept a mouse and a burning candle. So when a mouse and a candle were kept under the bell jar, after some time, after some time, that mouse The mouse was feeling suffocation, right? It start feeling suffocate and it died, right? As you can see here clearly, the mouse died because of suffocation. At the same time, this candle, after placing this candle under bell jar, it was burning earlier, but after some time, it got extinguished. Right? So this is what happened when you keep a mouse and a candle under a closed space. Now Joseph Priestley, he started thinking what may be the reason behind this? What could be the reason that mouse died and this uh, candle got extinguished? Then he only said that the breathing a mouse and burning a candle both damaged the air, right? He assumed, he predicted that whatever air present in this bell jar got damaged by this burning a mouse, burning a candle and a breathing mouse. And he called that damaged air as foul air. And he used a specific term called as a phlogiston. Okay, so what is this uh, phlogiston? Phlogiston is the term used by Joseph Priestley to mention this uh, damaged air or a uh, foul air. Further, he added that, he added in his uh, explanation that when we repeat the same kind of experiment by taking a mouse, burning candle, along with these two, if uh, any plant is uh, kept Right, along with these two mouse and a burning candle, if any plant is kept, like a mint plant he used, he noticed that the mouse was continued to be alive and candle, it was continued to be burning. Right, that is what a change this plant has brought. Now further he stated that how, how it is possible for a mouse to continue to alive and a candle to continue to burn in presence of a plant, he added that, he said that this plant has a capacity to restore the air. Whatever the damaged air is there, no? How come this air is damaged? This air is damaged due to the breathing of mouse and burning of a candle. So whatever the damaged air is there, no? It is restored by that plant. Right? So he said that plant restore. The plants are restored air damaged by this burning candle and breathing mouse. And at the same time, he used uh, one more term. He used uh, a term called as a deflogiston. So here you will come across uh, two terms. One is a uh, deflogiston and another one is a phlogiston. What is the difference between a phlogiston and a deflogiston? Phlogiston is a foul air, a damaged air. Then uh, what is this a deflogiston? A deflogiston is a fresh air or say pure air that is restored by wind plant. And uh, after this experiment, it took uh, four years for Joseph Priestley to discover oxygen. Now, if you see this uh, concept uh, from a neat point of view, what are the possible things that can be asked from this experiment? 
see only one thing we can expect a one question from this concept is the year of conducting this experiment that is 1770 and in fact you can expect one more question that is year of discovering oxygen as i said already the oxygen was discovered by same fellow in the year of uh, 1774 so that is all about the experiment conducted by joseph priestley now let us see the experiment done by another scientist so another scientist it is jan hingenaus he is another scientist and he repeated the same experiment what are this approach uh, priestley done he used the same experimental setup jan hingenaus and conducted experiment but he made a small change in that he took this experimental setup bell jar mouse and candle he placed this experimental setup once in a dark room and another time in a light in, a, in, a, in presence of sunlight so by placing this in a dark room and in a presence of sunlight he noticed one thing and he said one thing the plant can restore air the damaged air it can purify it can store only in presence of sunlight now why did he come to such a conclusion because he noticed that when this experimental setup was kept in a dark room the mouse died candle got extinguished off even in presence of a plant though there is a plant but this uh, mouse could not able to survive and this uh, candle was not able to burn continuously it got uh, extinguished and it died even in presence of uh, this uh, plant why the reason is he kept this experimental setup in a dark room that is why he said that plant alone is not enough plant alone is not enough to keep air fresh along with the plant the sunlight is needed so what is the contribution of this jan ingenhaus he said that sunlight is required it is required for plant to restore air so here you should understand a restoring air means purifying the air okay along with this experiment the same scientist conducted one more experiment the second experiment the second experiment of this uh, jan hingenaus we call it as a elegant experiment exactly what is the meaning of elegant if any experiment is very simple but very effective such experiments are called as elegant experiment so one such elegant experiment was done by the same scientist now let us see that so this was the experiment done by jan hingenaus okay so it is called as a elegant experiment so for this experiment jan hingenaus he used a plant called as hydrilla there is no mandatory that we should take a hydrilla only any aquatic plant can be used for this experiment right so here i am taking a hydrilla plant you know very well hydrilla is a one example for aquatic plant in fact it is an example for submerged plant and it is a photosynthetic it has a ability to perform photosynthesis so he took hydrilla plant this is the hydrilla okay so he placed that a hydrilla plant in a beaker and over that plant he placed a funnel there is a funnel you can see above the funnel again he placed a test tube this is a test tube
and this is a beaker okay so this is a experimental setup for this uh, john hingenaus used for his elegant experiment now entire this experimental setup was placed under sun it was placed under sun okay when a sunlight incident on the plant due to presence of the light this hydrilla plant start performing photosynthesis right and he noticed small bubbles were releasing right during this process he noticed there is a release of oxygen bubbles okay but when uh, the same experimental setup was placed in a dark room there was a no release of oxygen bubbles and one more thing you should remember from this experiment one thing is very clear this oxygen bubbles are released only in presence of sunlight and at the same time these oxygen bubbles are released only from the green part of the plant right so what is the outcome of this experiment one thing oxygen bubbles are released they are released in presence of sunlight and second thing is these bubbles are released only by whether entire plant is releasing bubbles no only by green part of the plant so why only by green part because it is a green part where photosynthesis is occurring right so do remember the outcome of joseph priestley experiment is that joseph priestley he said that during photosynthesis plant has a ability to restore the air and this fellow he said that photosynthesis need a sunlight and in fact in presence of sunlight oxygen is released that to only from green part of the plant so that is all about this elegant experiment done by john hingenhaus now let us see another experiment so another experiment or another scientist it is julius von sack and uh, we have to remember this scientist for a two contribution for his a two contribution so uh, first contribution it comes in a mineral nutrition and this uh, julius von sack he developed a method called as a hydroponics so exactly what is the meaning of a hydroponics uh, we can say that hydroponics okay this uh, hydroponics is future agriculture practice right uh, this is a future agriculture practice and uh, what we are doing in a hydroponics method hydroponics is a one such a method where we can grow a plant without using soil instead of a soil we can use a defined nutrient solution so when any plant is grown in a nutrient solution defined a nutrient solution in a, you know without using soil that is what called as a hydroponics the idea of a hydroponics was first given by this julius von sack but here we are discussing his another contribution what is that in the year of 1854 okay he provided evidences right what he did he provided evidences experimental evidences for what to prove that during photosynthesis glucose is produced okay so what is the end product of photosynthesis it is a glucose okay and further he said that this glucose is the end product of photosynthesis but later it will be converted into another form called as a starch that is why we used to say right right from the beginning of our first year syllabus we used to say that 
plant store food in the form of starch animals store the food in the form of glycogen right so that is what he said right he said that uh, plant during photosynthesis they produce a glucose as an end product but it cannot be stored glucose cannot be stored it will be converted into starch now question comes why why plant cannot store this glucose directly the reason is glucose is reactive it's a reactive and it's a soluble once it is a reactive and a soluble it is not possible to store this glucose that is why this reactive and a soluble glucose is converted into inactive insoluble form that is what called as a starch we can go with another form called as a sucrose even glucose can be converted into sucrose but what is a problem though this uh, sucrose is also inactive non reactive but it is a soluble so we need a, such a form of a food which should be non reactive and which should be insoluble so that is one starch okay so you hope you got that why plant a store food in the form of starch it was first said by this julius von sack and he added further that plants have the plants are having a green substance green substance within a special body within a special body and in other that a special body only photosynthesis will occur photosynthesis will occur okay so now we are calling this a green substance as chlorophyll what is that a green substance it is a chlorophyll then which is that a special body it is a chloroplast okay and do remember this statement is said by julius wormsack because it can be asked in a competitive level of examination right who said that who predicted that or who postulated that green plants have a special substance in a special body it was said by julius von sack so when you are reading this topic from for your neat preparation all you have to do is do remember name of the scientist second thing do remember the years and the third thing is you have to remember the name of the organism be it may be plant or animal on which these scientists did the experiment so if you are able to remember the years name of the scientist and on which a particular organism they did experiment and if there is any special statements right we come we come across a two scientist here in this topic who has given two valuable statements one here i have written it is a julius von sack you have to remember his uh, statement and uh, we will come across another scientist there is one more scientist his name is cornelius von neil he also has said a very beautiful uh, statement that also we have to remember we shall discuss that later but first you make this you know clear that uh, what is the contribution of a julius von sack in the field of photosynthesis okay now let us move on to another concept so another scientist it is t w engelman okay you have to be very much particular about this uh, experiment of tw engelman why because it has been asked already right in a previous need examination right particularly in a 2019 there was a one question from this uh, tw engelman experiment which was that question we shall discuss the later so this uh, tw engelman he conducted experiment let us see his experimental setup with the help of image so this is the experimental setup of tw engelman okay there you can see that engels engelman's experiment so what he did 
फर्स्ट थिंग फर्स्ट थिंग ही सेलेक्टेड एन अलगे ग्रीन अलगे कॉल्ड एज ए क्लैडोफोरा ओके दिस इज ए ऑर्गेनिजम आर इज ए प्लांट यूज्ड बाय एंगलमैन व्हिच इज अ ग्रीन अलगे फिलामेंटस ग्रीन अलगे वी हैव टू रिमेंबर दिस इज ए फोटोसिंथेटिक ओके एंड अलोंग विथ दिस क्लैडोफोरा ही यूज्ड एरोबिक बैक्टीरिया इन आवर एनसीईआरटी इट इज गिवन एज अ एरोबिक बैक्टीरिया but i said no this experiment was asked in a neat examination and during that time in a question aerobic bacteria was not mentioned it was given as azotobacter azotobacter so it means azotobacter is a one example for what aerobic bacteria now what is the meaning of this aerobic bacteria the bacteria which need oxygen for survival which need oxygen so he used cladophora green algae and he used aerobic bacteria azotobacter and he started he conducted experiment so what was the protocol or what was the procedure of his experiment this cladophora was made to illuminate by a light look at this a light this is the sunlight so when a sunlight was passed through the prism this is the prism when a sunlight was made to pass through the prism you know what happens there will be splitting of sunlight into seven colors that seven colors are called as the seven spectra there are seven spectral components okay so what are the seven uh, seven uh, spectral components one violet indigo blue green yellow orange and red so all these spectra will be having the sequence right this is what called as a spectral component so when a light is a passed through the prism the light will will be split into seven spectral component and each spectral is made to illuminate on the cladophora and there is a use of aerobic bacteria now why he is using aerobic bacteria he is using aerobic bacteria to detect detection of oxygen release right he just wanted to know in a which particular place or in a which particular site more and more oxygen is releasing to find out that he is using azotobacter you know after doing this experiment he noticed one thing when sunlight is made pass through prism it is split into seven spectra and out of these seven spectra the particular area where red light or a red spectra is illuminating this is the area where red light is illuminating and this is the area where blue light is illuminating this is the illumination of blue light this is the illumination of red light and in these two particular area he noticed more and more accumulation of bacteria aerobic bacteria now he started thinking what could be the reason why it is only at a blue radiation and a red radiation the more and more oxygen is being i mean sorry uh, more and more azotobacters are being accumulated then he found that there is a more and more release of oxygen so wherever oxygen is there no in that site bacteria will accumulate so he found that here bacteria are accumulating because here could be more release of oxygen now if you ask yourself why here only you know more amount more amount of oxygen is releasing because at a blue radiation at a red radiation there is a more rate of photosynthesis or you can say the photosynthetic rate is a very high at a blue radiation and a red radiation right that is why this blue radiation and a red radiation are called as the action spectra main action spectra okay and try to understand what is the meaning of action spectra it's a rate of photosynthesis done by plants 
in presence of a light at a various wavelength. See, sunlight is not having same wavelength. Sunlight is having a different kind of a wavelength. And at a different kind of a wavelength, there is a different rate of photosynthesis. So it means the rate of photosynthesis is not constant for all the spectra. Sometimes it will be high photosynthetic rate. Sometimes it will be very least photosynthetic rate. By the way, the rate of photosynthesis will be very least in a green spectra. Okay. If there is a green spectra or a green light, the photosynthesis will be very least. Then in a, in a which spectra, the rate of photosynthesis is very high in presence of blue and in presence of red. That is why they are called as the first action spectra, which was discovered by T.W. Engelmann. So you have to remember this experiment for the discovery of first action spectra, which is that a spectra, one is red and another one is blue. Okay, And he noticed one more thing, this blue and red radiations are such radiations which are mainly absorbed by the chlorophyll pigments. Chlorophyll A and the chlorophyll B are the two pigments which are absorbing a more and a more red and a blue light. So if they are absorbing more and a more light, that is what called as the absorption spectrum. So please don't get confused between an absorption spectra and action spectra. So first, let me clear this uh, action spectra. What is the meaning of uh, action spectra? The rate of a photosynthesis by the plant at a different uh, wavelength of the light. And in a which wavelength or in a which spectra rate of photosynthesis will be maximum? It's a red and a blue. Then what is the absorption spectra? Absorption spectra is uh, the absorption of a light by the plant, which is having different uh, wavelength. Now, how we are going to calculate this action spectrum? This action spectrum. Action spectra is mainly calculated by using, by measuring oxygen released. Right? We are going to calculate the action spectra. How? By the measurement of oxygen release. Right? Calculating the oxygen release is also called as a quantum yield. Okay, it is also called as a quantum yield that we shall discuss in upcoming classes. Okay, but at present, you do remember this. And to calculate or to measure the absorption spectra, how we were going to measure this absorption spectra, there is an instrument called as a spectrophotometer. Spectrophotometer is a device or is an instrument that is used for measuring the absorption spectra. Now let us see this uh, concept from a neat point of view. I already said you one question was being asked from this experiment in the year of 2019. And what was the question? The question was like this. One scientist maintained a cladophora along with the azotobacter and conducted experiment. So when he conducted experiment by taking cladophora and by taking uh, this uh, aerobic bacteria, azotobacter, more and more bacteria accumulated in which spectra? And this was the question, right? So the answer for this is more and more aerobic bacteria, they were accumulated in this blue radiation and red radiation. Okay. So you have to remember this blue and red radiation are the action spectra. And in fact, they are uh, you know, roughly resembles with the absorption spectra of chlorophyll A and B. And another possible question, you can expect from this is, uh, say, uh, what is the meaning of action and uh, absorption spectra? That is all about uh, T.W. Engelmann. After this uh, T.W. Engelmann, now let us see another scientist. So during a mid-19, right, during mid of the 19th century, The scientists, they were able to say that what are the key features of photosynthesis, okay. Almost all key features of photosynthesis were revealed during mid of the 19th century. What are the key features or what are the things we need for a photosynthesis? One, it is water. 
The second one is carbon dioxide. And third thing is sunlight. Sunlight. And even we need chlorophyll pigment. So these are the key features of uh, photosynthesis. And even there is a one simplest, uh, the empirical formula that is carbon dioxide reacts with the water, right? It reacts with the water and producing the sugar. Here the C has to O, it represents a sugar, simple form of sugar. Plus there is a release of water and there is a release of oxygen. Okay, so this is the one simplest uh, empirical formula that we can use for representing photosynthesis. Now, from here a confusion started. What is that? During photosynthesis, we all know that there is a release of oxygen, right? Because you know, photosynthesis produces two valuable product. What are the two useful product of photosynthesis? One, it is the food that is in the form of glucose. The other important product is oxygen. Now, scientists have started thinking that from where does this oxygen comes? Does it comes from water or else it comes from carbon dioxide? Because you know, if you see carefully, both are having oxygen. Carbon dioxide is having oxygen. Water is also having oxygen. Now, out of these two, from where or from which component this oxygen will be released? So it was a you know, question, unsolved question for many years later. This was successfully explained by a scientist called as Cornelius Van Neel. Okay. So this is Cornelius Van Neel, who is a microbiologist. He's a microbiologist. So he conducted a kind of experiment and after his experiment, he successfully said that during photosynthesis, oxygen is released from splitting of water, not from the carbon dioxide. So how did he prove it? He conducted experiment on bacteria. What are the bacteria? That is the purple and the green bacteria. Purple and the green bacteria. And we have to remember that purple and green bacteria, they are photosynthetic. They are photosynthetic, it means they perform photosynthesis. But they perform a special kind of photosynthesis that is called as an oxygenic photosynthesis. Okay, in fact, it was asked in NEET 2018 that which organism show an oxygenic photosynthesis. So first of all, you try to understand meaning of anoxygenic. See here, anoxygenic means whenever photosynthesis occurs, there should not be release of oxygen, any release of oxygen. Oxygen should not be released there, right? So when photosynthesis occurs, but there is a no release of oxygen, such process is called as the anoxygenic photosynthesis. And these two bacteria, these two bacteria performing such anoxygenic photosynthesis, and it was asked in, 18, 2018 need exam. So these are also called as the sulfur bacteria. They are sulfur bacteria. Now, why these are called as the sulfur bacteria? Because they use a sulfur in a various form. They need a sulfur in a various form. Say one form is hydrogen sulfide. They are using hydrogen sulfide. Okay, same thing is asked in a second year. One topic, uh, organism and a population. Right, under, you know, heading of the light, they have asked this uh, concept that, question that, sun is a celestial source of energy. What is the meaning of a celestial source? Ultimate source of energy. Okay, and uh, almost all organism on this earth, they obtain energy from sun. But there are some organisms which are present in a deep ocean. And these organisms which are present in a deep ocean, they are unaware about sunlight. They don't know even that sunlight exists. So such organism, how do they manage to get their energy? See, such organism like a bacteria, 
they don't need a sunlight they need the chemical which chemical chemicals like hydrogen sulfide for an instance for an example you take here only purple and a green bacteria they are not dependent right they are not dependent on the water they are using hydrogen sulfide and here hydrogen sulfide why they are using they are using it as proton donor they are using it as a proton donor okay in place of water they are using hydrogen sulfide now what he said he gave an equation that co2 reacts with a substance and gives sugar plus water plus the byproduct okay so this is the equation let me write in clear this is a carbon dioxide reacting with a one oxidizable substance here i'm writing h2a h2a is a oxidizable agent and after reacting with this oxidizable agent what it is going to produce it is producing sugar along with the sugar it is a producing a water and along with the water it is also producing what the by product of this oxidizable agent okay now what he said cornelius von neil he said that he gave a statement photosynthesis is essentially essentially light dependent process light dependent process so why we are calling it as a light dependent process because here there is a need of light okay so photosynthesis is a light dependent process where now this statement is very important where a suitable oxidizable a suitable oxidizable substance so here which is a suitable oxidizable uh, substance this one has to be now you should remember it is a oxidizable substance and what is the role of this oxidizable substance reduces it reduces carbon dioxide so it is going to reduce the carbon dioxide into what into glucose or say sugar okay so as for this statement this is oxidizable substance why it is called as a oxidizable because it has a ability to donate a hydrogen i know giving out a hydrogen is called as a oxidation now this hydrogen is accepted by carbon dioxide right so here addition of hydrogen is also called as a reduction here carbon dioxide is reduced okay so that is why if you read the beginning lines of this photosynthesis topic they have given that photosynthesis is a photo uh, redox process why this photosynthesis is called as a redox process there is a simultaneously oxidation of one compound and reduction of another compound so here the hydrogen from oxidizable substance is going to reduce the carbon dioxide when this uh, carbon dioxide is reduced no you get a sugar molecule so in exam by chance in exam if they ask you during photosynthesis does carbon dioxide is reduced or oxidized carbon dioxide is going to be reduced hence it is producing the sugar molecule right and uh, see here this uh, oxidizable substance is very important why in case of normal plant plants this oxidizable substance is nothing but water 
right? You can replace this uh, oxidizable substance by water in case of uh, plants. But in case of this uh, green and purple sulfur bacteria, where this oxidizable substance is not a water, it is see, hydrogen sulfide. Hydrogen sulfide. So it means if I, re if I replace this by water, that is the carbon dioxide in the water, what we are going to get? We get sugar plus water along with that we are going to get oxygen. Okay, we are going to get oxygen. But instead of water, if we use hydrogen sulfide, there will be sugar, there will be formation of water as well, but instead of oxygen, there will be sulfur. Sulfur is going to release. Okay. So, in a above case, it is the oxygen. In a lower case, it is the sulfur. Okay. So, this below reaction is a process done by this bacteria, sulfur bacteria. And as you can see clearly, there is a no release of oxygen. That is why such a photosynthesis is called as the an oxygenic photosynthesis. Whereas these plants, the plants, the green plants, when they perform a photosynthesis, there is a release of oxygen. That is why it is called as the oxygenic photosynthesis. And now listen to, uh, listen to this carefully. This was the question of NEAT 2018. As I said already, the, uh, the above reaction is the question of NEAT 2014th question. 2014 question. That what was the question? Which of the following is a showing oxygenic photosynthesis? Oxygenic, right? And oxygenic is asked in 18, but in 14 it was the uh, oxygenic photosynthesis. And in option, there was purple bacteria, green sulfur bacteria, oscillatoria, and none of these. Say we can say answer is a oscillatoria. Now, what is this oscillatoria from where it came? Oscillatoria, as you studied in a one topic, uh, this biological classification. There we studied that oscillatoria is an example for blue-green algae. Okay, say uh, this um, cyanobacteria, right? This is cyanobacteria which are having the chlorophyll similar to the higher plant. So they have the chlorophyll pigment. They are photosynthetic. They are autotropic, but they are prokaryote. Though they are prokaryote, they are having a chlorophyll similar to the higher plant. Now these cyanobacteria also perform a photosynthesis, and the photosynthesis performed by these organism is an example for oxygenic, right? So this is all about the statement or the experiment done by Cornelius von Neil. And do remember, this experiment is called as the milestone experiment. Okay, it is called as the milestone experiment. So you can expect a question in exam like, who conducted a milestone experiment to prove that oxygen is released from the water? So it is a Cornelius von nail okay and here let me tell you one more thing water is a being split during photosynthesis water will be split when water is a split no oxygen is released once oxygen is released out what is left hydrogen these hydrogens are going to reduce this carbon dioxide and here splitting of water occurs in presence of sunlight that is why it is called as the photolysis of water. It is called as the photolysis of water. So what is the meaning of a photolysis of water? Photolysis of water means the splitting of water in presence of sunlight. Okay. So let us discuss the today's last experiment. That is an experiment conducted by three scientists, Ruben, Kamen, and Hasid. Or Hasid. So Ruben, Kamen, and Hasid, they conducted an experiment. And the purpose of their experiment is also same, like a Cornelius one nail only. They also proved that during photosynthesis, 
in a green plant oxygen is released by splitting of water or a photolysis of water so how they conducted this experiment for their experiment they used o18 so what is this o18 we can call this as heavy isotope heavy isotope of oxygen okay see normal case oxygen atomic weight is 8 and the atomic atomic number is 8 right atomic number is 8 and atomic weight is a 16 this is in normal oxygen right but they use an isotope heavy iso heavy isotope of oxygen Okay, this is in normal. So what they did, they studied this uh, chemical reaction of photosynthesis where six carbon dioxides are used, 12 water molecules are used and there is a release of glucose plus there is a release of six water molecules and plus there is a release of six oxygen molecules now here they provided a plant carbon dioxide having a normal oxygen that is in normal oxygen is having atomic weight of a 16 whereas they provided a water with a heavy isotope of oxygen right o16 in a carbon dioxide and o18 in water molecule so when a, such a a normal and a heavy isotope of oxygen is provided to the, to the plant when photosynthesis is done and they noticed one thing in a glucose there was O16 oxygen. So it indicates that in a glucose in a glucose oxygen comes from carbon dioxide whereas in a water also there was O16 only. Right, so the glucose uh, in this uh, water both are having O16 only, whereas this oxygen released it was having what it was having O18 heavy isotope of oxygen. So, this uh, equation is enough to tell you that during photosynthesis, what type of the oxygen is released here O18 that shows that oxygen comes from splitting of water. Now, the same thing can be asked in examination by making a question like, say, if there is six carbon dioxide molecule where oxygen used is A and 12 water molecule, right? You can expect this as a question. And here B, then identify A, B as well as C. D and E also. So we have to identify what is this A, B, C, D. One second, let me change this. Let me make this question simplified. Here if it is 16, here it is 18, then identify A, B and C. So here in carbon dioxide O16 is there definitely A will be O16 uh, and there is a B will be also O16 right whereas C will be O18 okay. So that is all about the experiment of Rubin and Kamen. They also experimentally proved that during photosynthesis, oxygen is released due to splitting of water molecule, right? So in today's class, we had discussed about the earlier experiment. We started our experiment with a John Hingenhaus, I mean, sorry, Joseph Priestley. I think it got erased. We started our experiment with the Joseph Priestley experiment. And what is the out of outcome of a Joseph Priestley experiment? He proved that plant purify air damaged by this uh, breathing mouse and burning candle and do remember what is the meaning of phlogiston and a deflogiston and do remember 
in a which year he conducted experiment and in a which year he discovered oxygen after joseph priestley we come across jan hingenhaus he did a experiments you know two experiments in first his experiment he repeated the experiment of joseph priestley only but he uh, you know he proved that sunlight is required for a plant to release air or to purify air or to restore the air and in his uh, second experiment he this is called as a elegant experiment in his elegant experiment he proved that during photosynthesis oxygen bubbles are released the two oxygen bubbles are released in presence of sunlight from green part so after this we come across julius von sack who in the year of 1854 said that during photosynthesis glucose is produced but it is stored in the form of starch and he also said that plant having a green substance which is called as a chlorophyll is present a within it is present what it is a present a within a special body that special body we are calling it as chloroplast right so after this we come across one of the most important uh, experiment uh, conducted by done by t w engelman right so there was a question from this concept and what he proved he was the first to you know discover the absorption spectra and action spectra actually he showed action spectra and action spectra roughly resembles with the absorption spectra of chlorophyll a and b okay and after this so we discussed about this cornelius von neel experiment in cornelius von neel experiment it is also called as a milestone experiment and it proves that during photosynthesis right photosynthesis is a light dependent process where carbon dioxide is reduced by a suitable oxidizable agent and produce a by product if it is a oxidizable agent is a if it is a water then oxygen is released if this oxidizable agent is sulfur hydrogen sulfide then there is a release of sulfur and as you can see here the two questions have been asked from this concept and at the last we discussed about the experiment done by ruben and kamen uh, these people also proved same thing that during photosynthesis there is a release of oxygen by the splitting of water but they did it by using by taking the help of heavy isotope of oxygen so that is all about the early cases early experiment of a photosynthesis after this the remaining things will be discussed in the next class thank you